Hope you're getting ready for a very exciting weekend. Kickoff in Canada West football. A lot of university programs, college in the USA, one week away from the National Football League. And what better guy to join us to talk about all of this? Got a lot of questions for him. Mike Vanderjack, two-time Great Cup champion with the Argos, former Saskatchewan Rough Rider in the NFL 98-206 with Indian Dallas. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it, Mike? Did I miss anything? <laughs> Just retiring as the most accurate kicker in NFL history. Other than that, I, that about covers it. <laughs> yes, it is on your Wikipedia. Hey, before I go any further, Mike, I was the sideline reporter, Saskatchewan Rough Riders Radio in 1993, which was your first pro team. What do you remember about Saskatchewan and what was going on there back then? Because they still talk about you lovingly in the Wheat Province. I mean, as they should. I uh, it's a it's a crazy story how how I ended up out of there, but uh, I I loved it. I I had uh, a great experience. I was excited about where I was living, and before you knew it, I was packing my bags and leaving town. But uh, you know, I, I came in there as a guy that was competing for both the kicker and the punter. So I was going against Brett Maddich as a punter, and I was going. A little bit against Dave Ridgeway as a kicker, but obviously Dave was a legend. So, you know, I was more focused on, you know, trying to win the punting job. And uh, Don Matthews was in charge. Any Don Matthews <laughs> stories? Well, I mean, it, I, uh, my sister was getting married. So I was given permission to go to my sister's wedding in Toronto. So I... Flew to Toronto, went to my sister's wedding. I got back in time for practice and just decided not to go. I, uh, I went home and hung out, and the next day, Coach Matthews called me into his office and said, I'm cutting you for rookie mistakes. So I, I always uh, <laughs> learned from that lesson for sure. And then, crazy enough, you know, when I was playing in the Arena League under – Ray Yock was the head coach of the Minnesota Fighting Pike, who was the offensive coordinator when I was in Saskatchewan. He he brought me into Minnesota and said, "Listen, you're you're my kicker. You don't have to try out." You know, obviously, I, we knew each other just from when I was in Saskatchewan, and so that was cool. And then uh, I kept kicking off into the stands to the side and not through the net at the back. So he, I got cut for horrible kickoffs. And then the crazy thing is, is I, I got signed in Toronto a week later, and lo and behold, Don Matthews was the head coach. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for winding that all up in like 60 seconds. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say 96, yeah. 97, great cups. Hey, I'm going down tonight to Cardinal Gibbons High School to watch Cardinal Gibbons play uh, Madonna. You know who coaches them? Matt DeBuck. I have no uh, did you play who? with Matt you know Matt? Matt DeBuck, you played with him in Toronto. Do you remember Matt? He was a receiver I do. from Verdun. Little Matt, yeah. Tiny oh. little dude, yes, absolutely. Is he really the head coach? Make okay. sure you tell him I said hi. Three-time state champion, bro, 5A. And we just lost Mike Vanderjack. He's getting it. Oh, there he is. He's back. Yeah, three-time well, state champion, 5A. So, yeah, you, I knew you'd uh, will remember you see him, though? sure. Of course. He's the guy that gave me the pass. Oh, yeah, I'll be on the uh, sidelines. I'll be close to his bench. So, yeah, Okay, exactly. well, just make sure you tell now, him I said hey. Absolutely. Now, listen, Norm Fong, Hall of Fame equipment yeah. manager of the Rough Riders, always said, all the guys said, Vander Jack's got uprights in his backyard. <laughs> tell us about that story. <laughs> Do you still? No. Um, they, uh, I, 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 well, when when I signed my big deal in in Indy, I uh, I bought 13 acres in Milton, Ontario, about 45 minutes outside Toronto. Uh, that's where I was living in the off season. I built a ridiculously stupid large house, and I had a lot of property. And on the side of the house, there was a lot of room, so I I put NFL uprights in there with a big net in behind it. The the Colts actually sent the two equipment guys. From Indy, they drove to my house and installed the uprights for me. So it was uh, it was quite something. And um, <laughs> funny story is there were people that would walk by my house, not know who I was, and ask if Paula's Baldison lived there. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, uh, a Hall of Famer in his own right. Well, so who snapped for you and who held? And and how, uh, and, and did that p play a role into you retiring at 86.5% field goal percentage, most ever in NFL history? Yeah, I did a I did a newspaper article and at the time, I, or no, a magazine article, and my wife was holding for me because we did some photo shoots and stuff, but I'm sure she will claim no fame of holding for me in the off season. So I would, uh, obviously I just used little sticks and went out there with my son at the time who crazy enough is now 24, but, um, uh, you know, we just go out there and bang them around and, and you know, and anytime we'd have a party or something, all my buddies would want to get out there and try to see if they could make field goals and no, not to anyone's surprise. They could not. <laughs> of course <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Trust. I've tried it. Uh, so that kind of leads into, the, the question I want most answered, other than the uprights in your backyard, is what's the secret? Well, I, I mean, I coach kickers and punters now, so I have a, a lot of kids that I work with. And uh, having a soccer background is a massive advantage. Um, just the ability to put a foot on a ball since you were a kid, helping to guide that ball, um, you know, as a goalkeeper, taking goal kicks. As I, as I work with kickers and punters, my, I fall back a lot on um, just how you would kick a goal kick in soccer is a very similar technique to how you would kick a football. So if, in fact, you have a soccer background, it certainly helps. Well, and interestingly enough, I was just looking this up today, you retired number one at 86.5, but it's like seventh all time now. So what's changed in the game? Well, I, you know, I would say the number one thing is um, is coaching. I, I, I'm, I never had a coach. I just kind of always put the ball down and whacked it through the uprights. Everything is so specified these days. You know, if, you're, if your daughter plays volleyball, she's playing it 10 months out of the year. You know, if you play hockey, chances are you got in, you're in a summer league and speed camps and all this kind of stuff. And if you're a kicker, you know, you have a kicking coach that you've had through high school and – you know, you just got so good so early that it, it just becomes something that is obviously a lot more natural to you because you've done it so long. So I think uh, the easiest answer is coaching. Um, you know, the the a more detailed answer is the fact that, you know, the, the, the ability to rush a field goal changes. So, you know, there aren't as many blocks as there used to be. Um, the fields are nicer. They're not those muddy old things or, or different kinds of grass anymore. Almost everything is field turf, and more and more stadiums have removable roofs, so the, the weather conditions is declining. So, you know, there's a lot of other factors other than the fact that kickers are just better. I'm going to go a little longer on that, this segment, if that's okay. And I'm talking just a couple minutes, uh, if that's okay, because yeah. questions have come in from the viewers um, Patrolman Pete in Winnipeg watching, he says, what happened to all the foreign kickers from overseas that were so common in the 80s? I don't really remember those guys. Ridgeway was mine, but do you have an answer for that question? Um, not, not specifically. I mean, I know the, the Zendejas and Rafael Septien and all those kind of guys in the NFL were, you know, even Morton Anderson and Gary Anderson have um, foreign ties. You know, I just think in America, there's just uh, like I mentioned before, the the coaching and and the well, the the pure number of Americans is you know overwhelming. So you know, you're going to have a lot easier time of finding kickers. I think um, the ability to make the money that NFL kickers are making these days, and I think there's just more of a an interest in kicking than there probably was back in those days. So there's now just a, from a pure number standpoint, a lot more kickers in America are trying to get, you know, to start with scholarships and obviously go from there. There you go. Well, you mentioned the soccer background. Those Europeans would have had a soccer background. The Americans wouldn't. So I totally get it. And it's funny because the yep. Canadians that I know, and I assume you follow, where are you, Mike? Where, where do you live, by the way? I actually, I'm on, uh, I have three acres with 100 feet of waterfront on Lake Ontario, but on the New York side. So I'm, uh, I'm 45 minutes okay. from, the, from the Niagara Falls border. So I, I, I wanted to get back to close to friends and family, but still wanted to live in the States. Gotcha. Well, it's just my buddies that kicked in the CFL, Luca Kanji from Toronto, 
um, Chris Meadle from Montreal, they're all soccer guys. So they were after you, yeah. but it, it t totally uh, makes sense. Well, I guess yeah. I'll end it there. Mandy says you answered uh, her question before I even asked it. it was with regards to individual coaching. So I'll just say this. What's up in the world of Mike Vanderjack these days, Mike? Well, I do, uh, I do coach kickers and punters. I lived in Scottsdale for six months out of the year most of the time. I'm just now kind of transitioning. This will be my first winter in New York, so I'm not sure how long I'm going to survive. But prior to that, mm -hmm. I was living 10 years in Scottsdale. So I, uh, you know, I have kickers and punters in college. I have a punter at Texas Tech who's a three-time All-Big 12. He's an All-American. I've got a kicker at North Carolina State who's an All-American. I've got a kid at University of Washington who's going to be really good. I've got another few of them in high school around here. But I'm uh, I'm part of a group, actually, that just acquired Fathead. So I'm uh, I'm one of the new owners of Fathead is that decal company um, that Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, used to own. So I guess I'm now the owner of – part owner of Fathead. And, you know, that, uh, that business world that I've been living in for the last 10 years has paid off and – now transitioning into uh, raising a hundred million to a billion dollar company. Well, congratulations on all of that. A businessman. Yeah. Mike, big fan. Appreciate the time. Enjoy the football this weekend. Hope we can do it again. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. Mike Vanderjag joining us from New York State.